Hello, everyone. This is artist Kenneth Law Sr. Welcome to KJL Art Sanctuary Podcast. And today we're going to be doing a little bit of art history. Um, the, this episode is Sister Gertrude Morgan, A Legacy of Faith and Art. What a wonderful, amazing artist Gertrude Morgan is. Let me adjust my mic here because I think like I'm crouching over a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it was like I was trying to adjust to the mic instead of adjusting the mic to me. But it's neither here nor there. But anyway, so um, we'll take a look at this extraordinary life and uh, le legacy of um, Sister Gertrude Morgan. She's an African-American artist, musician, poet, preacher. And we'll delve into her captivating journey, uh, showcasing some of her iconic paintings, uh, discussing her profound impact on the world of art. Okay, but before we dive into uh, Sister Gertrude Morgan, uh, we're gonna take a moment to uh, look at some of the upcoming episodes uh, that we have coming on the podcast, some of our artist interviews. We have a nice lineup of artists. So let me show you what we have coming up. Oh, uh, let's get here. Still don't have my moderator yet. <laughs> it's all good. All right, let's get to where we got to go here. Let's go here. And I'm not worrying about working the controls and doing this. It's actually pretty fun. Uh, anyway, so get a little background music on here. On pull up episodes we have coming up. So I'm going to share my screen with you in a second, and I'm going to go to uh, uh, our YouTube channel. But I hope everyone is doing well. It's nice. The weather's great here right now. I'm enjoying the weather. Uh, it's a nice day. I had me a nice uh, walk this morning. And uh, I try to get up every morning and do about, you know, three miles in the morning, get the bones moving and uh, uh, pretty close to the college in New Jersey in my area. And, uh, you know, I like going there in the track in the morning and running. I don't like running on the asphalt. I've been at it, you know, been an athlete basically all my life. So mess your joints up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share. Let me see if I can share the screen with you and go to my uh Give me a second here, and I'm going to share my YouTube channel with you. Just put that on the stage. All right. So it should be coming up in a second. As you can see here on my YouTube channel, uh, we have a couple of different episodes that are coming up. This. Uh, our next episode is episode 17, and it's Beverly Keith Kelly, as you can see here. And hers is March 23rd. It's one of our very few times that we do an interview on a Saturday with the artist. It's usually Sunday mornings. But we have Beverly Keith Kelly. Uh, she's coming up next, next Saturday, uh, the 23rd, and that's going to be at 11 a.m. And then we go right back to our regular Sundays after that. And we have coming after her. I'm sorry, I'm skipping. Through it. I don't know why this thing is acting the way it is. Uh, but right after that, we have on the 31st, we have Rebecca Swain. And she is our artist for March 31st. And then after Rebecca Swain, we have coming in going to get to her. And we have Mary Faye Claggett, and she's going to be the artist of the month for, for, the, for the artist that we artist April 7th, and hers is at 11 a.m. So we got that there. Let me stop sharing the page there for a second. Okay. So we're back. And uh, so Remember, please tune in. Um, when you tune in, uh, like, share, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It helps us. I'm trying to grow my channel. Uh, I'm just about to hit my 100th subscriber. 
And it usually takes a, a good year or more to get over a thousand subscribers, not unless you just for some reason. But it's not just about the subscribers, it's about people that are really interested into art history, hearing some of these artists' interviews, um, and watching and seeing some of the art with Kenneth, which is show some of my processes that I take uh, in doing my own artwork. So now we're gonna turn our attention to Sister Gertrude Morgan. Um, and as I discussed, uh, um, I'm going to read you her biography real quick so you can get an idea who this wonderful woman is. And I'll put up a couple of images of Sister Gertrude Morgan. So let's get rolling and see. This is Sister Gertrude Morgan. Uh, Sister Gertrude Morgan uh, was born Gertrude Williams on April 7, 1900 in Lafayette, Alabama. She journeyed through life as an African-American artist, musician, poet, and preacher, leaving an indelible mark on the world with her self-taught folk art paintings and unwavering devotion to faith. Gertrude's early years were marked by hardships and struggles. Growing up in poverty, in rural Alabama, she faced adversity from a very, very young age, leaving school before completing the third grade. Despite these challenges, she possessed a profound spiritual calling that would shape the course of her life. In 1928, Gertrude married William Morgan. And I was trying to find some pictures of William Morgan, but I just was unsuccessful of finding pictures of her husband. Um, but she married uh, William in 1928 and they settled in Georgia. My father's from Marietta, Georgia, by the way. And uh, she was in uh, where they uh, settled. However, it was in New Orleans that Gertrude found her true calling. She lived in Georgia until 1938. In 1939, she relocated to the vibrant city, immersing herself in its rich cultural tapestry and forging deep connections within the community. The Call to Religion Gertrude's journey into the world of religion was a gradual unfolding marked by profound spiritual experiences and divine revelations. In her late teens, she joined the Rose Hill Memorial Baptist Church in Columbus, Georgia, beginning her journey of faith. However, it was in the 1930s that Gertrude experienced her first powerful revelation from God. Sitting in her kitchen one night in 1934, she heard a voice to her, calling her to a higher purpose. This transformative moment marked the beginning of Gertrude's journey as a preacher and prophetess, dedicated to the spreading of the word of God to all who would listen. And, and, and this part right here really resonates with me because I didn't start painting it until at the age of 47. And a similar thing happened to me. I had a canvas. I had bought some oil paint canvas from Michaels and it sat there for months. I didn't do anything. I always knew I liked art, but I didn't do anything with it. And I, it sat there and then January, uh, I'm at December 31st, it was New Year's Eve. I was sitting at home and it's just, it, it was like this thing just, just hit me and it said, you know, paint. And when the ball dropped, 2008, that was the first time I painted a painting was January 1st, 2008, New Year's Day, right when New Year's hit. So every year I do like this ritual of at the midnight, I, um, you know, I start a painting just as, a, you know, just as a ritual that I do every year moving forward. Um, so I get where she was coming from because it just hit me. It wasn't something that I thought about doing for a long period of time. It's something I know I like, but then just one day I just said, I'm gonna be an artist, I'm gonna create. Um, and I've been enjoying it ever since. Um, but she had this epiphany one day. She, she had this calling and she knew that she had the paint. And Gertrude has some very, very interesting artwork. She has a lot of religious texts and things. Uh, that is included in the artwork. Um, I'm going to go a little bit further and then I'm going to show you some of her artwork. 
in 1938, uh, um, in 1938, Gertrude received another revelation compelling her to leave Columbus and embark on a journey of preaching and prophecy. Traveling from Alabama to New Orleans, she followed the call of the divine, guided by faith and unwavering conviction. Orphanages in New Orleans. Upon her arrival in New Orleans, Gertrude's path intersected with Mother Margaret Parker and Sister Cora Williams, kindred spirits who shared their devotion, shared her devotion rather, to the holiness and sanctified movement. Together, they founded an orphanage and mission in the lower Gentilian neighborhood, providing shelter, sustenance, and spiritual guidance to those in need. The mission became a beacon of hope in the community, offering solace to the downtrodden and marginalized. Gertrude's paintings adorned the walls, serving as visual expressions of her faith and devotion to God music, preaching, and acts of compassion, she embodied the principles of her faith, touching the lives of countless individuals with a boundless love and compassion. So, as you can see here, this is some of Gertrude's work. It seems like it's very, very childlike. It's like a form of like a folk art, but it's really, really amazing. Sometimes people think it, it's, it's easy to paint stuff like this, but it isn't. You know, she really, really... Uh, has a connection to her artwork and she really puts her soul and her spirit into it. As a matter of fact, if you're in the Trenton area at the New Jersey State Museum, there are a couple of her pieces. And I think this is one of them or something similar to this is right now at the New Jersey State Museum. So if you'd like to see one of Gertrude Morgan's paintings up close and live, go to the New Jersey State Museum on West State Street in Trenton and you will uh, be able to uh, see one of her paintings a lot so she every all of her paintings they tend to have they all have like a spiritual uh meaning to them uh, a lot of her paintings have uh texts from the bible or scripture um and she's always got angels in there they're very bright and colorful and each one of these they have a different story uh that's being told um uh, along with them I like this piece right here. And um, I wish you can kind of see it up a little closer if you want to put them in, but it's a beautiful piece, well-constructed. She does some, and, and it's like how she'll have like, um, like you see there's buildings, but then there's these floating angels all around. And uh, she reminds me of another artist, Purvis Young, uh, Purvis of Overtown, who is um, going to do documentary on him as well i actually been putting that one together um but this is women's history month so i thought i'd do this episode honoring uh gertrude morgan another woman uh artist and here's another one of gertrude's pieces right here beautiful and as you can see there's a lot of writing i mean I, when i went to the museum i just was reading all the stuff that was on her artwork and it's not just the uh, artwork itself but it's the writing and you have artists that have come you know later like Basquiat and everything and they have the text and the art so you have a lot of artists that picked up styles like this um, and uh, this is Gertrude Morgan 1900 she was born and she was doing this um, let me show you another one of the artwork this is one of my this is one of my favorites right here I like this one right here um, trying to, I don't have my read glass on, I can't really read that. Let me see if I can open this. I know, uh, I have to, see, I've read it when it's on the other side. See it over here. <laughs> Old man in his glasses. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you a video. And this is her, I mean, this woman went, and I'm going to continue to read her bio, but in between, I'm going to, I'm going to slip in here and show a video by Christie's, which uh, carries a bunch of her artwork uh, as well. Uh, so this woman went from like being a basically uh, a folk artist or what they want to call outsider artist, not that well known. And she's got a uh, write up with Christie's. They did a film 
<laughs> with Christie's. Um, her artwork is sold there. Um, so I'm going to show you this video. I think I can pull it up with Christie's. I'm going to have to share my screen again with you. So let me go on YouTube and bring up that uh, video. Christie's. And you know, with using other, using videos and things like that, I have to make sure. So I may stop the video off and on just for uh, copyright purposes. Um, but I am going to share with you. Let's see. I think I saved it on this slide already. I think I'm slowing my computer down a little bit while I'm doing this too. Saved it to a playlist. So, if anyone has any questions or anything, I haven't been looking on here to see if I'm getting any, any, uh, anyone. Um, right here we go. We got Sister Urchin Oregon right here. So let's get to. And it's so fun. And then one of the other things about uh, Sister Gertrude Morgan, it's, it's not just uh, the fact that she um, is her art. She's also a singer. And we're going to listen to a few of her tunes as well. I'm just trying to pull up the video from Christie's. I think I got to search for it in here. Uh, let's see. I got to put Sister Gertrude Morgan in there. I hope you guys don't mind that I'm going through this, but hey, we're family here, right? We're doing this and we're not going to be so stuck up on this. You know what I mean? This is if you're sitting right in front of me talking to you. I want you to feel that, uh, that comfortable. Let me put it on this is the Gertrude Morgan video. Christy. Yes, we're a family here. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna share my screen again. Give me a second, everybody. I'm gonna about to share my screen so we can catch this little video of Sister Gertrude Morgan and uh I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to stop it every now and then in between because uh, for copyright uh, purposes. But uh, the video is coming up now into the studio. I'm going to add it to the stage. Stay here. My computer is running a little bit slow. I'm sorry because I have multiple windows open up here. Let's get this rolling. As you can see, it's buffering a little bit right now. I'm sorry if that's causing problems for anybody right now. Uh, come on, video. Let me know anyone if you're having trouble hearing that. I turned the volume up as much as I can. So this is a video by Christie's. She had this hanging. Let me know if anyone's having exactly. trouble hearing this. This was uh, the all seeing eye. I mean, it's real clear that there's a you know an all seeing eye watching over you, protecting you, watching you, caring for you guiding you great art is an extension of the person you, you can't really distinguish between the artwork or, or the person and her artwork was an extension of what she believed the word that she I'm sorry, I lost it a little bit here. Uh, I, for some reason, my uh, computer is running a little slow. Uh, got a couple of different cameras going on here and a couple of different things connected, but uh, my computer is a little slow. Uh, come on, connect back for me because I really do want you to see this video. Uh, 
I have to try to share my uh, screen one more time. I'm sorry. Let's make this work this time. And just to get a glimpse at, at, at Sister Gertrude Morgan. And when you get a, a chance, I will include the uh, link to the I video I'm trying to show you. I will include the uh, link. The 1950s. And I start with Larry Bornstein. Larry. Let me know if you cannot hear this. Encourage your artist to come and paint in this room during the daytime and night. In Yes, we're having trouble. Uh, for some reason, the internet here is just like very slow. And you need a lot of, uh, the browser has to be great in order for this to work. So I think I'm just going to disconnect on that because it's slowing down. But what I will do is I will include that, that particular clip of Sister Gertrude Morgan. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to take a break and see if I can work on that for a second. And we're going to look at one little short advertisement from... Uh, KJL Art Sanctuary Gallery and Studio. So let me get that on here for you. While we proudly showcase the original artwork of artist Kenneth J. Lewis Sr., we also offer an array of other products to complement your artistic interests. From charming coffee mugs and elegant note cards to stunning prints and captivating published books, there's something for everyone to enjoy. Be sure to explore our diverse selection. As a token of appreciation, we're delighted to offer you a special discount. Simply click the link in the description and use promo code KJL10 at checkout to receive a generous 10% off your order. Plus, enjoy free shipping on orders totaling $50 or more. It's our way of saying thank you for supporting our passion for artistry. Start browsing now and enhance your collection with our unique offerings. We can't wait to see what catches your eye. Hashtag grateful, hashtag much love. Okay, we're back. Okay, so let me show you a little bit more of Sister Gertrude Morgan's art. And uh, she also made these fans. They were so cool. Like, you could look at them. Very, very colorful, you know, fans that she would make. All different designs on these fans. Bride of Christ. In 1957, Gertrude received yet another revelation from God, affirming her identity as the Bride of Christ. Embracing this new role, she discarded her black missionary attire in favor of a pristine white ensemble, symbolizing her purity and devotion to her divine spouse. This woman at one point said, I'm Jesus' wife. I, uh, and, 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 and literally, uh, changed and start wearing white and she started painting pictures of herself and I think this is one of them right here she's had it's like her and her and uh her sitting there her and Jesus and uh it, it's amazing she calls you know called start calling herself the bride of Christ she was wedded to Christ and uh it reflected in her artwork as well um some of the text she would have in there and that's why she had such a religious undertone of all of her artworks. Just a religious undertone on everything. The buildings, she did churches, she did uh, 
and no matter what she did and she'd always tend to have some type of uh angel or it was just very very colorful uh the artwork uh, this is one that was rare that didn't have a lot of text in it um and i can't remember when this one does i think this may have been one of the earlier works before she had the revelation and started putting a lot of scripture uh in her artwork i love this picture right here uh sister gertrude Moore. <laughs> Yes, she was an amazing, amazing woman. And like I told you, she did sing. And I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to pull up some of the uh, couple of her songs to sing uh, that uh, that she did. Um, and actually, in that documentary, there were people that had discovered her and she would be in front of her uh, in front of her house and she would just come out. She had like this bullhorn thing. I'm going to see if I can bring it up a picture of that. She would just be on that thing and just singing and praising God and creating art right in front of her establishment. And she had that tambourine, but I'm seeing that bullhorn. Where's that bullhorn? And she made just like, it was like a made up bullhorn. It looked like it was just papered. It was just twisted around and uh, into the shape of a bullhorn. Oh, I'm so bad I didn't pull that picture. Uh, but what an amazing woman. So let me go back up here. Nope, I can't find the one with the bullhorn. But uh, it was a it was a sight to see in some of the videos that you see her out there on this thing. And I mean, she's in the middle of the street, uh, preaching the word of God and sharing her art and dressing as the bride of Christ. Um, throughout her life, Gertrude's artistic talents flourished, inspired by divine revelations and guided by unwavering faith. Her paintings, characterized by their simplicity and depth of emotion, captured the essence of her spiritual journey, depicting scenes from scripture and personal experiences. Her work gained recognition in the 1960s, rather, thanks to the efforts of art dealer Larry Borenstein, who introduced her paintings to collectors, museums, and galleries. You see how this works artists a lot of times you can be out here creating your art doing your art no matter what uh you can be in all of these groups it doesn't matter it's, it's like somehow a, a break like this comes on here's a guy that was able to um help her he was an art dealer um and he introduced us to some of the collectors within his group and things like that so anybody can catch a break like that but this woman really had talent and really was worthy of that and many of you artists are worthy of that as well so uh there could be a time where someone comes up to you all it takes is to have a collector uh come and uh you know start purchasing some of your artwork and you never know where it goes from there um i would advise artists too to like have on your website if you have one have a collector's page where uh if you go to my website, you see I'll have a collector's page and it's collectors have access to that. People that have bought art from me, um, those are, they are the only ones that will have access to that section. So they get a little extra, get to see a little bit more behind the scenes activity um, because of the fact that they have purchased art and art collectors and they get to see a lot of things before uh, others will see it. Looks like I have a comment here. Let me see what it is. Great show. Love the angels. Yeah, Mary. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Mary. Because, and actually, I look at your art, Mary. And, uh, uh, you know, it reminds me of, of uh, someone like this as well. You have some very uh, nice art and it's very unique to your style. And uh, we're going to get you on here, Mary, <laughs> for an interview one day. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh her, her art is just amazing. And again, it looks so simplistic and so childlike, but try to do this. It is not easy. Um, here it is, another one of the fans that she has. So let me go on and tell you a little bit more about why you're looking. I'll put a couple more pieces of her artwork up here and I'll put a picture back up here. No, I'll put a picture up here of her work again. Okay. Um, Throughout her life, again, her artistic uh, talents flourished, inspired by divine revelations and guided by her unwavering faith, 
Her paintings characterized by their simplicity and depth of emotion capture the essence of her spiritual journey, depicting scenes from scripture and personal experiences. Her work gained recognition in the 1960s thanks to the efforts of art dealer by Borenstein, introduced her paintings to collectors, museums, and galleries. Her art became a source of inspiration and contemplation, inviting viewers to delve into the mysteries of faith and spiritual alley. I just saw a friend of mine walk past here. Uh, today, I decided to do my uh, podcast uh, from a Starbucks, which is awesome. <laughs> Getting out of the studio a little bit, but uh, fortunately, sometimes people will see you, but hey, what's going on? But anyway, let me get you another picture of Sister Gertrude Morgan. Again, this one with the tambourine. She always had a tambourine in her hand. So Sister Gertrude Morgan's life and legacy continue to inspire and uplift us, reminding us of the power of faith, love, and compassion to transform lives and communities. Though she may have passed from this earthly realm, her spirit lives on in the hearts of all who are touched by her art and ministry. As we reflect on Gertrude's remarkable journey, let us remember her words and deeds, her faith and devotion, and let us strive to emulate her example of unwavering love, compassion in our lives. May her memory be blessing to all of us now and for future generations to come. So what I'm going to do here is again, I'm going to try to see if I can share the screen again and at least play one of the songs that was done because there were actually albums that were created again. Uh, when I, um, I'm going to edit the, the headings and I'm going to include some of the videos here so let me do this real quick let's see if share the screen again i'm going to try to i'm going to try one more time i'm hoping youtube doesn't take up too much of my face here but we're going to get at least one of those songs we're going to play a sister gertrude morgan i'm telling you she had this voice it was amazing so i'm asking god to help me with this one <laughs> uh, so that I can be able to uh, let you guys at least hear a little bit of it. Because I definitely wanted on this uh, episode. Again, I am so sorry this computer is slow. Love eventually invested in a, a little nicer one. But again, we family. I'm just talking to you like family. That's it. All right, let's see what we got here. So we're going to go, let me type in Sister Gertrude Morgan, get one of her albums. I'm going to see if I can find Old Jerusalem. That was one of the ones I really liked the song that she did. Uh, let me see. I definitely want to play it, see if I can find Old Jerusalem. If not... No, not new, old Jerusalem. I meant new Jerusalem. So let me see if I can share the page here real quick. And then we'll see if we can at least play some of that song there. New Jerusalem. Let's see. I'm going to take myself away from the stage. Maybe that'll help. New Jerusalem by Sister Gertrude Morgan. The following audio clip, New Jerusalem, was performed by Sister Gertrude Morgan and was recorded with tambourine live in her living room, which she called the Prayer Room in New Orleans, Louisiana in 1970. This song and others by the artist are part of the album Let's Make a Record, made available by Preservation Hall Recordings. Have you heard of a city? Streets are bidding. Streets are paved with gold. Our prayer goes to the city. Hallelujah. Meet me in the city. Meet me in the city. Streets are gold. Meet me in the city. Streets are gold. Meet me in the city. Streets are gold. Meet me in the city. 
I'll be there in that great big beautiful city. Hallelujah. Yeah, that was a little bit of Sister Gertrude Morgan's New Jerusalem. I don't want to get a copyright strike on it. I just played a little bit. And again, like I said, I am going to... Uh, let me stop sharing that page. Uh, so, like I said, I am going to share some links in the description for you to do a little bit more research and put some of the information about Sister Gertrude, you know, on the podcast. But let me go to show you a little bit more of her artwork. I'm going to go back over a couple of the paintings. Again, she used a lot of angels and churches. She called herself the Bride of Christ. Uh, had serious religious uh, Christian undertones to all of her paintings. If you're in a local area, in the Trenton area, Trenton, New Jersey, you can go to the State Museum. They have a couple of her paintings there that you can see live. Uh, and one that they have in there is very, very similar to this one. I actually thought it was this one here at the State Museum. Uh, but it's something, uh, she has art in there very similar uh, to that right there. Okay, so... We're going to start wrapping it up about Sister Gertrude.